Good afternoon. Uh, we have today with us uh, Brian Webster, uh, who is, uh, I guess, a multifaceted person. But today we're going to talk about uh, his HAMP project, correct? No, the uh, Space Tourism Agency. Okay, so which encompass also that project? No. It's a different one. Completely different. Okay, so that one I never heard about. Tell me about it. Okay, so uh, thanks for having me, Aileen. Yeah, no problem. My yeah, pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, as you know, I'm uh, always working on like a, a dozen different projects and a dozen different things. So I do have, uh, you know, a consulting practice specialized in the California hemp industry. It's a right. new green sustainable industry. I've always been involved in, you know, uh, business and environmental stuff. And so I got that going on. But I have... Um, you know, you said that the theme of this show was new ideas and things right. like that, right? So the, one of the uh, more exciting new ideas that I have is working on a, uh, a space tourism agency, oh. which will be headquartered here in San Francisco, uh -huh. and will, uh, it will service tourists who are going into low Earth orbit hmm. with SpaceX and Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic and then eventually we'll be uh, going, you know, into a space station mm -hmm. called the uh, Gateway uh, that will be orbiting the Earth. And mm -hmm. then it'll be for passengers going to and coming back uh, to the Earth, you know, leaving the Earth and then coming back, either going to the moon or going to Mars or however things uh, evolve in the next 10, 20 years. Okay, great. And these people will be able to see from the window? Well, uh, basically, we're going to be a, uh, you know, a tourism agency, like right. a travel agency. Right. So we will be uh, representing uh, several different companies, which all have their own package mm -hmm. and their own kind of uh, thing that they're offering to uh, space tourists and, you know, space uh, travelers. So, oh. for, for example, uh, Virgin Galactic. Right. Uh, uh, Virgin Galactic is doing a, um, it will soon be, they've already been selling the tickets and the tickets, the sales have been going great, but they're gonna be, uh, they have a uh, spaceport that they're developing in New Mexico, mm -hmm. and they're gonna be taking, pe the, the, the first package that they're offering right now, yeah. it's about $200,000, uh, and it will take you up to uh, the edge of space. Yeah. You will not orbit the planet, but you will get to the edge of space and then you will be weightless for, you know, however long it is, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. And then you'll be going back down in this plane that will have a uh, uh, rapid descent, but will land like an airplane in an airfield in, okay. in New Mexico. So that's one package. I know, but while they wait for five minutes, can they see around What's going yes, on? yeah, that's the whole thing is the windows. Oh, there's windows. You know, yeah, it's going to be like, uh, you know, even better than a Lear jet, even better oh. than your own private jet. I think okay. the uh, Virgin Galactic will have about eight passengers, Yeah. Uh, you know, more or less. Uh, and then eventually, uh, you know, they will evolve. How long is the flight? The, you know, the, they, haven't, they haven't given out the specifications yet. So this is the thing. Oh. This is like, um, this is like, uh, it's not really like the beginning of the air passenger airline industry. Okay. Right? Everybody could see it coming. Okay. Right? You could envision not only taking a trip to, you know, from San Francisco to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but eventually taking a trip from San Francisco all the way to New York. Okay. They didn't have, they didn't have the, the planes yet. They didn't have the details. They didn't know how long it was going to take, three hours, six hours, what it would take. But they could see it coming, and people were very excited about going on an airplane from San Francisco to New York rather than by railroad. So this is a, this is a new thing. You're, you have several companies will be offering different packages. So Blue Origin, which is Jeff Bezos' company, his space mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. he'll be offering uh, a package to go you know, up, up and down. Uh, you'll either be going immediately up and immediately down, okay. or you'll be going up and then doing a couple of orbits and then coming down, 
once this gateway space station is built, you'll be able to go and stay at the, at the uh, gateway space station. They will have a staff of about 150 people, mm. but they will be able to have, they'll have rooms and facilities for 1,200 people. So people will go there for vacations and they'll stay for like a week and then they'll come back down. Then other people will go for, go to the moon, not landing on the moon, but circling around the moon and then coming back. That's what uh, the, uh, that's what the, uh, the uh, business entrepreneur in uh, Japan is doing. He's booked the first real space tourism flight to the moon uh, which will be taking uh, going in 2023 on SpaceX uh, uh, rockets, and that will be going around the room and then coming back. Uh, that's a very exciting project. He's a very, very interesting, very uh, amazing guy <clears throat> because, well, one, he's a billionaire. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, creative juices in his blood. Mm. He... Uh, he came to the United States, uh, and went to school briefly, and then he went back to Japan and sold uh, uh, CDs, kind of like pop music CDs from America in Japan. Then he started a clothes company and made a lot of money and became a billionaire. And that's where he got the money to buy this, uh, to buy not just the first ticket on the first SpaceX rocket that would be going around the moon, but he bought the whole ship all of the tickets. Mm. And then he made this announcement that says, I choose to go to the moon with artists. Mm. So he's going to bring like six or seven artists with him mm. that are like musicians and graphic artists, maybe photographers, maybe sculptors, designers. And he's going to, they're going to travel with him around them and then they're going to make art. They're going to make creative uh, art and impressions of this first trip around the mo around the moon in 2023 is the is the target date, and then they're going to come back. He's got a project called uh, Dear Moon, and uh, it's uh, it's very exciting. So that is just, and he's got the money to to buy it. So at first, um, the market will be uh, very rich people. People can either buy, you know tens of millions of dollars to buy the whole rocket the rocket trip around the moon or $200,000 to buy, you know, a Virgin Galactic flight up, up and down. Or there's other companies, uh, there's a company called Worldview Enterprises that will take you kind of like in a balloon mm -hmm. all the way up to kind of the, the, the border of space where, you, you know, and then and then the balloon comes down. So, you, you know, that's called uh, uh, Worldview Enterprises and our space tourism agency. Um, we're calling it the best travel agency in the solar system. Uh, and it's for, it's so kind you're of... you're going to sell tickets. Yes, as an agency. Hmm. So we're not going to be, um, we're not the Virgin Galactic Company or the Blue Origin Company or the SpaceX Company. We'll be an agency for the, the space tourism packages that the best space tourism companies will be selling to uh, people around the world. Nice. So they agreed that they will use your agency? No. <laughs> no. But they will because we're the first one. And we're in San Francisco. So well, it, it doesn't if, take much of an effort to sell six tickets on one trip. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, you know, so I why would they need an agency? Well, because um, there isn't any, any, you know, trial, any, you know, tourism like, um, you know, any um, cruise ship line needs a tourism agency or any airline. There's, what we're going to do is we're going to provide personalized service to people who are shopping around okay. and looking for the best space experience yeah, the best deal. For, for their for their vacation uh, their vacation in space and the vacation would last no more than a day no no it'll last it, it, it depends upon what is available mm -hmm. right right now there's very limited available right now the only there's a um, 
a Russian kind of space adventure agency yeah. uh, that will sell you a ticket to the International Space Station. Okay. But that costs like $20 million. Okay. Right? So that's like the only thing available right now. Okay. In about six months, six, nine months, you'll be able to start going up and down on Virgin Galactic. After that, it'll be Blue Origin and SpaceX will have some, you know, up and down, you know. So it's all kind of, uh, it's all new. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I, my idea is to develop this company, and we're actually gonna do three different things. One is we'll sell these packages uh, as a regular tourism agency. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a retail store in the Union Square neighborhood of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have a, a kind of an art gallery uh, there also for, for uh, space art. And you'll be able to see videos and, you know, and uh, all kinds of multimedia experiences, uh, VR experiences, all kinds of kind of uh, uh, creative space art things. But there'll also be like a retail store. So if you want a flight jacket for Virgin Galactic, or mm -hmm. you want a flight jacket for Blue Origin, or you want um, you know a a hat or a, you know something that you would buy in a kind of a space tourism retail store, mm -hmm. you'll be able to buy it there. So we'll we'll have people who are not going up to space right now, but they're, it's on their agenda for doing five years from now, ten years from now, when the price goes down or they saved up the money, whatever. In the meantime, they'll be wearing their Virgin Galactic flight jacket or their Blue Origins flight jacket or their SpaceX hat kind of a, kind of a thing. And we can, do, you know, we can even make all kinds, you know, with this, uh, if we do work with the Zozo company, which makes custom customized uh, clothes based on a kind of a high-tech system. You can make your own space suits, space jackets, you know, kind of a thing using this uh, Zozo uh, custom design thing. But the, but the um, anyway, so the thing of it is, um, it's, it's, an, it's an idea, and the concept is to put it in San Francisco. So San Francisco is a very unique place. San Francisco, I'm a big evangelist for San Francisco. <clears throat> San Francisco is a city and a county and a city. It's a major local city. It's a major California city. It's a major uh, national city. And it's a major international city. And the Union Square neighborhood of San Francisco is the shopping and tourist district of San Francisco. So you have the biggest hotels and the biggest retail flagship stores for Apple and mm -hmm. Lord and & Taylor and, you know, Macy's and AT&T and all these different things are, are in Union Square. And you have people from all over the world coming in on a regular basis. They're coming in from Israel. They're coming from China. They're coming from New York. They're coming from all over the world, and they're coming to visit in San Francisco. So while they're there, they're international travelers already. They can stop in to the Space Tourism Agency and get a little, a little flavor of what's available for them in the near future. Uh, the, the, you know, and uh, so we're very excited about that. And then, of course, if you look into the future, um, everybody who watches Star Trek, uh, the whole Star Trek series, and knows the Star Trek canon, knows that this the, there's two institutions, one Starfleet and the other is Starfleet Academy. They're headquartered in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So you can see in this, you know, if you like the Star Trek vision of this future, which is positive, multicultural, they've ended poverty, you know, in the world, mm -hmm. you have kind of like a green sustainable planet and people are exploring space. Mm -hmm. But when they coming back, they're coming to if they're in Starfleet or they're Starfleet Academy, they're coming through San Francisco. They're landing in San Francisco and then going on to France or, you know, China or wherever they're going to, you know, visit their family kind of kind of a thing. So for you to list all these companies like SpaceX and Virgin and all that, you have their permission? No, no. What I'm saying is kind of like Amazon, yeah. right? So yeah. Amazon, they started... You know, they said, OK, we're going to do an online business because we can see this is going to be big, this right. new thing called e-commerce. Right. And we're going to sell books. Right. Right. 
Now they didn't when they started that up. They didn't say, "Okay, we have a, now we have a deal with Simon and Schuster, and we have a deal with Random House Publishing." Oh, they just took the initiative to sell them. Yeah, they said, well, "This is where we're going. This is oh. where the market is going." Oh, I see. So I we're going to create a platform to be in the center of the marketplace. Okay. Right, and then we're going to acquire and service customers. Right? Okay. And we're going to do, we're going to acquire and service customers and we're going to do a more excellent job than anybody else. And by doing that, we will then be able to sell yeah, yeah. anything oh, because okay. people will trust the Amazon name. Right. And so whether you're selling, you know, uh, books or you're selling, you know, electronics or you're selling, you know, clothes, we want to, you know, we want to, uh, we're not going to stop selling clothes directly to people right. who want to buy clothes. Right. We're not going to stop selling books directly, but we will sell books through Amazon. And we, you know, so it becomes a global trusted brand, and that's what we're hoping to do with our space tourism agency, mm -hmm. is become a global trusted brand, and then acquire and service uh, but space even, tourism even customers. Even on Amazon, some products or companies don't want to be on Amazon, so uh, so Amazon doesn't put them there. That's okay. That's okay. You know, it, the space tourism business is going to be huge. It's yeah. going to be huge. And if we only have like half of the, if we're only working with half of the companies oh, okay. that are in the state, then so we'll be very, be okay. very happy. Oh, okay, okay. Then we'll so very, then very as, as you represent them, then you say, hey, you're in. Okay. Right, right. All right. So, uh, but each space shuttle will have a limited number of seats. Yeah, just like every, you know, every boat and every airline, every airplane has a limited number of seats. You know, we may only sell one seat at a, we only sell 10% of each flight, oh. or we may sell 20%. It, okay. You know, it really doesn't matter. What, what matters is that if we do sell it, that we give the customer personalized service. Okay. And we, we can, and we develop a relationship with them so that, you know, if they say, okay, I had a great experience, you know, with Virgin Galactic going on this trip. Now I want to have a great experience going on this other trip. And so I'm going to come to you and help me, you know, you know me, I know you, help me have a good experience, that, that kind of a thing. Okay, sounds like a good uh, project. Uh, hopefully it will become a reality. <laughs> Like well, any other any other idea it has to become a reality at some point. Right. Well, I'm very encouraged about several different things. One is, uh, one is the uh, you know this um, Dear Moon project and the fact that there's this very famous you know artistic and visionary um, um, you know he's a he's a, a commerce leader and he's an artistic community leader and he's going to the moon and he's bringing artists with him. That's going to be a fantastic thing for everybody, oh, the, you that's know, this right. Dear Moon project. It will be publicized. Right? The other thing is, in terms of um, science fiction... So and that would be SpaceX? SpaceX, yes. He, he gave... Uh, uh, he had a major uh, kind of press conference at the SpaceX facilities, and uh, he's now... I believe he's sold his uh, Zozo company, the majority of it. <clears throat> I think it was to uh, Yahoo... Um, uh, Japan, okay. right? And so now he's going to start up another business, another kind of a business. But he's a, he's a very, all these guys are very talented in their very le leadership thing. He just happens to be on the consumer, the tourism side of the industry. But Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, Branson, these are all, you know. They all like the space adventure. Right, and they're all very successful business people and they're all you know going to you know do a great uh, service for their customers and then and then you know and then the the it'll just get bigger and then the price will go down and it'll be more accessible to people now, i just wanted to mention that there's a movie coming out uh, i actually forget the name of the movie but the uh, it was written by the guy who wrote the mars uh, the uh, movie and the, that was the famous mars movie where uh, uh, the guy gets stranded on Mars, and he has to kind of like science his way back. But the, the the unique thing about it it was it was a science fiction story, but it was very anchored in science fact, you know. So the, there's a new movie coming out by the same author, 
uh, and it's going to be about the moon, hmm. and it's going to and it's going to be about us. It's kind of like a you know kind of like a, a a mystery thriller kind of a thing, but it's anchored in a moon station, mm -hmm. which is focused on tourism. Nice. Right. So you have to figure. This guy has figured out. You know, I want to set this story on the moon. What is the economy going to be like? What is actually going to work to actually have people on the moon? Mm -hmm. And what he figured out is that there'll be science, but there'll be tourism mm -hmm. there. And so he's got this. He's going to show the America, the 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 worldwide movie-going public a vision of the moon that has tourism going back and forth. They haven't seen that since, you know, Stanley Kubrick came out with 2001. Right, so this will be a much more, th you know, updated version. It'll be showing what a tourism, you know, system and economy looks like on the moon, and it will be. It's self fiction, because life on the moon doesn't exist. Yes, but no, life on the moon is going to exist. No, it's not because it's going to be on Mars. No, no, it'll be, it'll be, on a space station called the Gateway. There's a California company foundation already have it, having plans oh, to... Oh, they're going to put a, a gateway there? Yes, yes. This is what it, this, this is what it looks like. This is the... Uh, I don't know if you can <laughs> see this, but this is the, the image on my company's web, web page, right? Oh, so they shows a person floating in space yeah. above the earth, yeah. and then it has this little thing here. This is the Gateway Foundation oh, Station. Oh, Gateway, okay. Right? So the Gateway Station... It'll be floating. Yes, it'll be orbiting the earth. Oh, right okay, in between okay. the in between the moon and 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 the earth and it'll okay. be a, a stop off point for people coming and going to the moon oh, okay. and back okay. or people because they'll have 150 crew people mm -hmm. and I've already signed up I'm a member of the Gateway Foundation crew I'm, my crew number is I think 405 wow. and I pay an annual fee to be a member. Yes, and this guy, the guy who is uh, the executive director, he has these YouTube videos which are just fantastic. They just show the business plan, how the thing's going to be built, you know, the the economy and and all kinds of really amazing details of this space station. But the key thing is that they'll have 150 staff people, and they'll have 1,200 rooms for tourists oh. for people they can either come up and go down or they can come up and then go to the moon and come back or they can go there and then go to mars but you'll have you'll have actual ships going back and forth from the moon you'll have a smaller number of ships going back and forth to, to mars i don't know if they'll have a you know it's like a very eccentric people well it's for tourists yeah but I you mean, know you don't want to live on the moon know, you don't want to you don't want to live on the galaxy either I mean, it's going to be like a hotel, basically, uh, in a space. Yeah, but there's are, there are people who they live like in hotels. Away. They like to get away. Well, there's people who, like, you know, they live in Las Vegas, oh, right? Oh, that's true, that's true. You know? There's people who hop from one hotel to the other. Yeah, yeah and they hardly go outside because it's so hot. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know? They are hotel yeah. people, yeah. And that's what Jeff Bezos kind of sees. He sees that in the future there will be... Uh, not colonies on Mars or mm -hmm. colonies on the moon. There'll mm -hmm. be tourist industries there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there'll be science industries there. Mm -hmm. But he sees large groups of hundreds of thousands of people living in these, in these uh, uh, they're not really colonies, they're just like large space stations. Wow. And then what he sees is that the Earth yeah. will be zoned for residential and light industry. Oh. And space will be tourism and heavy industry. Wow. Right? So he sees, he looking away in the future, he sees uh, the mining of the asteroids, mm. taking, uh, taking the asteroids and either bringing them closer to the Earth and then disassembling them and reassembling them as structures, these, uh, the, you know, these large space habitats or uh, for industrial, you know, heavy industrial purposes like building rocket ships. And there's the there's these elements on the earth called rare earth elements yeah. that are in your cell phone, you know, and all kinds of things, but they're rare. Mm -hmm. They're not so rare in the asteroids. They already know that there's large quantities of them there. So there's going to be like a whole industry, not only bringing water 
yeah. and ice, you know, so that you can make uh, hydrogen and oxygen and, you know, and, and, and the things that you'll need in, in space, but, but also rare earth elements. And there'll be a whole industry. Anyway, it'll be heavy industry. And hopefully the earth will not be heavy industry. It'll be light industrial, residential, and, you know, and we'll have a, you know, there'll be a great ecotourism industry on the planet Earth, mm -hmm. and there'll be a space tourism industry that's, you know, that's also, you know, sustainable and create a lot of jobs and a lot of revenue and hopefully a lot of happiness for a lot of people. So where did you get the interest in space? I mean, most of your other projects were down to Earth, right? <laughs> to, to use the word down right, to Earth. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been, you know, uh, you know, I've always been kind of like a community organizer and a marketing guy and a sales and marketing guy. Uh, but, you know, you even had interest in the, in the space. I was a kid. I used to be a kid. Yeah. <laughs> and when I was a kid, I built model rockets. Oh, really? And I and I shot them off, you know, a thousand feet in the air with these little solid fuel. It was I the see. Estes I rocket. See. So that explain your interest in that. Well, also, I was watched a lot of television. Oh. And I read a lot of comic books, oh, okay. right? And all. Oh of, yeah, comics. You like comics? Uh, I'm a Do big comic still, book you guy. You still get those comics? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate because you know I I live very close to this annual event called the Silicon Valley Comic Convention. Yeah. Right, which Wozniak so and, and the late Stan you Lee go? founded several years ago. Yeah, you know, and then I mean they used to have the Comic Con here at the. Uh, uh, there's a center. Moscone Center. Yeah. Yeah, it was called WonderCon. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever go? Uh, I've been to that once or twice. Uh, yeah. I used to, when I was a young, young, very young. I went young, a couple times. It's when good. I was very young, I went it's to good. the, in, I think it was 1969, I went to my first Comic Con in San Diego, which is uh, the big national Comic Con, you yeah. know. And uh, all the comic designers yeah. are there. And then in New York City, we used to, you know, like go to the, you know, the local uh, Comic Cons in New York City. So it takes you out of the reality, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but the, the great thing about growing up and being, you know, now being, you know, still being, uh, you know, like a big kid. Yeah. Right. Is that it's a great time to be alive. Because now we're going to space. Yeah. Now, you know, now I can see it. There's a $200,000 ticket. A couple of years later, there'll be a $100,000 ticket. A couple of years later, it'll be a $50,000 ticket. It's going down. It'll eventually go down. There'll be rockets not only going up into orbit, but there'll be rockets going from, uh, from San Francisco to Tokyo. Wow. And, and it'll just, they'll, they'll go up and they'll come down and it'll be faster than an airplane, oh. faster than an airplane. Now, you know, you gotta. Uh, do, what would anybody do that just for a one and once in a lifetime experience? No, they do kind it to save time. time. Oh, save time. To yeah, because they don't want they don't <laughs> want to be on an airplane for like twenty hours. Oh. So if they can do the rocket thing for three hours, or four hours, yeah. rather than a sixteen-hour flight. They're gonna. This th is gonna be a reality. Though? Yes. Yes. My goodness. You can see SpaceX is, you know. They do is have, have Paris, New York, three hours now. Right, right. But, it, you know, it's for the very rich kind of thing. Right, right. Well, hopefully, uh, there will always be very rich people. But, the, the, you know, the key thing is to eliminate very poor people, extreme poverty. And, you know, I'm they very. They want to be surrounded by the rich. Yeah, well, I'm very excited about, you know, the people who are talking about universal basic income. You know, there's a guy running for president. Oh, yeah, you know. Andrew Yang. Yes. I have been following him, too. Yes, I'm very excited. He's so funny. Yes, he's this an amazing. Guy, this he, guy's funny. Yes. He's, he's got what it takes. He's really real. He said, pay $10 and you have a chance to win a uh, 1000 a month for a year, uh, you know, on his website. Yang. Yeah, it could be. I, you know, it, yeah. it, it could be. Anyway, that's Yang 2020 yes. com. So a twelve thousand dollar a year universal basic income will be a yeah. fantastic thing for Americans, eighteen yeah. years or older. But what if we had a universal basic income for the very poorest people? Mm. There's a about a billion people who are living on less than two dollars a day. Yeah, that's another right? countries. Yeah. But what if they got? Thousand. Five dollars a day. Oh yeah. For universal basic income, then yeah. they wouldn't be 
and it, they wouldn't be in extreme By poverty. The way, Elon Musk is sponsoring Andrew Yang because they both like, you know, out of the box ideas. Right, know? right. Yeah, they're very, <laughs> very, you know, smart, they, visionary, they talented both, guys. They're both on the same page. <laughs> right. Yeah, and they both, you know, really care about, you know, they're very interested in systemic change. Mm. Right. Elon is doing it through, you know, clean energy and, and you know, and, and, and clean transportation. Andrew, he wants Andrew Yang to be president. Yeah. I, um, you know, so for every, you know, everything I hear about bad news, bad news, this bad news, that, you yeah. know, I look around and I try and see the positive thing. I think know? he's got a great idea, but whether or not he'll be elected for it, that's a different story. I don't see how he cannot be elected. I don't see how, you know. You know, what's he's, he's still behind in the polls. I mean, he made he, it to the top ten, but yes. he did not make it to the top four. Right. He will make it to the top four. He will. Yes. And then when he gets to the top four, people start saying, twelve thousand dollars a year for me, mm. and my sister, and my brother, and my mother. That's a lot of money. And all the homeless people on the street. And all these prisoners getting out of jail who have, you know... Can't... Why say no to that? Yes. Everybody, you know, it's just like, you know, Social Security, you know, it'll be like... Social Security for it all and yes. eliminate all the administrative costs. Yes. And we can, we can afford it. It's like a tech tax. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. They've That's been what doing it. They've been yeah. having an oil ta uh, an oil based universal basic income yeah. for, from it's Alaska. Yeah, it's a social media tax because we use Facebook and we don't get paid for it. Right, right. So he said, that's like you guys using social media, making all these people rich. It was, you should get a piece of the pie. <laughs> yes, yes. And there's, there, there, is plenty, there is plenty to go around. So yeah. it's not like, uh, it's not a right or left thing as he says it's forward. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's just ha you, know, you just have to have a different point of view, a different strategy, and be able to communicate it. And then then the common sense will become a real thing. Yeah, Just like yeah. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. started talking about Medicare for mm -hmm, all. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's talking about it, and it's going to become a real thing. It's just because it's common sense that it has it in Europe, it has it in Canada. It's like a normal thing. It might become a reality. It will definitely. Li little by little. <laughs> well, you know, things can't, you know, things can't stay. The only constant thing is change. Yes. Okay. So, so things are things are definitely going to change. They are moving in that direction for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to McCain, uh, we still have Obamacare. <laughs> yep. Okay. I mean, his vote made it uh, so that we didn't repeal it. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was you know. But uh, that's good that he did it before he <laughs> passed away. But anyway, to go back on the idea, it's it's. I mean, on the idea point of view, it's a good idea. Yeah. So, you know, I have, yeah, I was very interested when you said I have this new show for ideas. Yeah. Right? Because I am constantly coming up with ideas. I have a whole consultancy yeah. called Better World Advisors yeah. where I give people out-of-the-box ideas and come up with kind of creative solutions. And you consult them about it? Yes. I work as a consultant, you know, on, uh, you know, on that. But for myself, I'm, I try and limit things. Mm. Right? So I have actually 10 ideas on the book, <laughs> on the books that I think can change the world that I'm working, that I can work on and implement in the next five years. Like Andrew Yang and... <laughs> yes, yes. Then I have another list of 10 ideas that are like, it will take 20, 30 years oh, wow. to implement. Those are things like my human race day idea, you know, and, you know, and other long-term ideas. But this... Uh, you know, this space agency I can develop over the next five years mm -hmm. and I will be there when the market is ready and, you know, and and, and people are, you know, they, they, they can't wait. You know, they're going to come to San Francisco. They're going to come to our space tour. City, and they just want to talk to like-minded people. They mm -hmm. want to say, hey, you know. And now, you, you know, know, what's his name from Virgin? Uh, Bronson has his own hotel now. The Virgin Hotel of San Francisco. Yeah. So so he came to San Francisco and he was promoting the, uh, you know, healthy lifestyle and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if uh, yeah, I'm he's sure a great guy. He's got this. He he's got a a youth group called the uh, Virgin United. Yeah. Which are working on all kinds of global problem solving. He's got a climate war room. 
He's a he's a, he you invests know, in all kinds of projects. Yes, he's working, you know, on ending the war on drugs. You uh, know, like, as long as he's alive, he's gonna put his money to good use. Yes, which is good. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of his. And he landed in the Silicon Valley with an empty suitcase, and he made it big. So that's good. He's yeah. got. He started with his first backer of one million dollars, and then he made it. So he started out with a. Uh, he had a student newspaper. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think he also then he got into selling records, kind of like. Uh, yeah, but when he came to the Silicon Valley, it was to seek capital. And he got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's actually got a Virgin Capital company or Virgin Green Capital yeah. company. He's, or, or, he know. just started his with one million and then it blew out of proportion. <laughs> it was yeah. good. But he's got great, you know, he's got uh, the great merchandise and he's got a great product and service with his Virgin Galactic. I, I have a, there, on my website, the, uh, the uh, spacetourismagency.com, there's a picture of me standing in front of, of a replica of his space ship, his space oh, thing, yeah. on an aircraft carrier in New York City. Oh, wow. Right, so you can actually see the New York City skyline in the back with me, like, having my hand on, on, on this thing. And that was a promotion that he did with Land Rover a couple of years ago. And it was not actual the actual uh, Virgin Galactic ship. It was like a replica. You know, uh, kind of a kind of a thing, but um, you know, I can't wait to uh, to uh, get my uh, what I call my agency discount for me going up. So you know? try to catch him next time he's in the city because I saw him in person twice. He was at the Marcadero at the, your uh, your. Yeah, but when, uh, yeah, and I think I've seen him at the Salesforce, the Dreamforce convention. Oh yeah, yeah, he was interviewed by. Uh, Dream, uh, I mean, by the Dreamforce CEO, yeah. Mark. You know. That's the great thing about San Francisco is everybody, if you just stay put here, everybody comes to you. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, we have the biggest conventions here. Yeah, we just had the Democratic National Committee here. Andrew Yang was here. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. you know, I got, you know, and that's right in my neighborhood. <laughs> you know, I'm on uh, Powell and so O'Farrell right in the, the middle of the... So who's going to be the top three or the top two of the 2020 race? Well, I think that, uh, you know, what do I know? But, you know, uh, I, I know think, you want Andrew Yang, but who else who you think is going to win? Well, I think it'll be, you know, uh, it'll be, I think eventually it's going to be a big fight, you know, up in uh, the top four. Uh, yes, uh, up into the top four. But eventually something's going to happen the way it happened before. Something's right. gonna some. They catch said up. they said Barack Obama could never beat Hillary. And he Hillary's did. got it locked up. This new guy, Barack Obama, or whatever his name is. Don't worry he about him. He doesn't have a chance. And then all of a sudden, he was ahead of Hillary, and then he won the nomination, and then she became Secretary of State to Barack Obama. Right. Then they said, "Oh, this guy Bernie Sanders. He doesn't have a chance. He's not gonna. He's not gonna make it." And he did. Yes, he almost beat Hillary to the nomination, and you know, and and, and now uh, he's back on the race. Yes, and then uh, Donald so you Trump. Want Bernie Donald or you want Trump Andrew? in 2016. Donald Trump was on was on stage with 17 Republicans and this old guy named Jeb Bush, right? Who had all the money. He had the name recognition. He had all right. the endorsements. He, people didn't. That's vote. where Joe Biden is right now, and what I think is Andrew Yang is going to follow the path of. Barack Obama? He's going to follow the path of Donald Trump. Oh. Because people, you know, I'm, you know, an active Democrat and, and, you know, I'm a liberal guy and I'm a progressive guy. I live in San Francisco. But I'm smart enough to know that the people in the swing states, right, mm -hmm. they're much more, they don't care about my progressive agenda. They don't care about uh, the end of the world. Okay. They care about the end of the month. Okay. Right? What's the, in it the, for me? Well, these are the people who got upset about the gasoline tax in France. Right? These are the yellow vest people. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Who said, you know, I, I care, you know, I'm concerned about the environment, you know, and I don't want the world to end, but I'm trying to get to the end of the month. And I can't afford this gasoline, <laughs> this gasoline tax. So, Andrew, what Andrew Yang says, yes, I understand. We're going to give you money. Oh, We're yeah. not going to take money away from you, and people will vote for that. 
And then once they get a little bit of breathing room, that thousand dollars a month, you know, then they'll be able to like, you know, breathe a little bit. Like yes, and they'll they'll, they'll you know they'll just be able to do. They'll create jobs. Yeah. Yeah, they'll create jobs. They'll spend money locally. They'll spend you know, money on you know childcare. They'll help you know they'll spend. That's the way to go. College education, all the you know all the, it's going to be. Do you know in Switzerland the minimum people receive is twenty seven two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Even if they don't do anything, so it's already in a reality in Switzerland. <laughs> right, and I'm sure the people in Switzerland they do do a lot of things. Yeah, right. It's not like you're gonna stop being, you know, you know, uh, uh, creative inactive, or yeah. you know. They you, do use the money for for endeavors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Life go life, life goes on. There's nothing that you know. There's nothing that says you ha that life has to be miserable. Mm -hmm. That you have to go to a job that you don't like, that's you know, right. every day, you know. Let the robots do that. Yeah. You know. That's what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> that's going to happen whether we, you know, whether we whether we like it or not. So we might as well create jobs that are, you know. More uh, to be human. Yeah. Yes. You know, like, uh, you know, taking care of kids, taking yeah. care of senior citizens, being a Tour, the tourism industry. There's going to be a tremendous amount of eco tourism in the world. If there wasn't poverty, people would not be leaving their country to come to the, you know, to Europe or the United States. They would say, "Okay, I'm going to stay where I am in Africa. I'm going to stay where I am, you know, in Central America, and I'll come to the United States or Europe as a tourist. Oh, okay. And I'll spend, you know, I won't be the richest tourist in the world, but at least I'll get to see New York or Chicago or whatever. And then I'm going to go back home." You know, and you know. Yeah, if it catches on in the U.S., it will catch on to other countries. Yeah, but we gotta we so, gotta figure out a systematic way to eliminate the mo you know extreme poverty, create a you know green sustainable world, and all these things are possible if you you know if you just uh, if you just say it's not impossible. <laughs> okay, right, it's well, an attitude and actions. You gotta work on it. You know, you gotta have a good attitude. And you gotta figure out what works. You know, and, and put your efforts into, you know, thing, things that work. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure to interview you. And uh, thank you for letting us know about this new uh, idea, Space Tourism Agency. And let's see how it goes. Like, it will be a reality soon, Thank right? you so much for inviting me and having me. And, uh, you know, like I said, I got a short list of 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you want me back, I'll come back. And, 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 and I'm a big blabbermouth, but hopefully I'm a, at least an entertaining blabbermouth. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.